In the late 2000s, there were two artists, Sam Sadin and Sebastian Gochu, who worked at high-end VFX and animation studios, like Double Negative. They were so fed up with how slow the production pipeline can be, especially when dealing with hundreds or even thousands of assets in huge VFX environments. So they had a vision to fundamentally improve the standard VFX pipeline. From the start, their mission was to develop game-changing innovations, especially for artists, as they called it, a software for CG artists by CG artists. So this artist-centric philosophy led to the development of their flagship product, which they released in 2012, and then went on to change how all studios do their work, faster and more efficiently. So what is this software and how it changed the VFX industry forever? The software I'm talking about is called Clarice. Its creators were motivated by mounting frustrations with traditional 3D and VFX tools. Autodesk Maya was a prime example, especially when building massive scenes or complex environments. By 2011, the typical VFX pipeline involved multiple different software for modeling, animation, separate render engines, compositors, etc. Many of which were built on decades-old code. As Sam put it, the industry workflow was like a dinosaur, a 20-year-old code passing along this tiny wire to modern render engines. This just does not work. In practical terms, artists often faced excruciating loading times and sluggish interactivity when dealing with large-scale scenes. The developers recalled that in a standard pipeline, once a scene was ready for final lighting and rendering, just loading the files can take, say, 45 minutes to open and then longer to see the first render appearing. In Maya, for instance, a complex environment with millions of polygons, heavy textures, and multiple references might choke the system. The artist would spend ages waiting for the scene to open, then wait again for the render to kick in, all before getting any feedback. This slow stop-and-go process made iteration painfully inefficient. The isotropic founders were through the artists themselves, so they actually felt the pain of wasting time optimizing scenes and waiting on software instead of actually being creative. They realized that over the last 20 years, CG workflows had gotten more and more complex and less and less well adapted to the artist's needs. A situation that was increasingly at odds with the fast-paced, high-pressure reality of modern VFX productions. And as you can imagine, these frustrations set the stage for Clarice's radical redesign of the workflow. So the takeaway is, Clarice IFX was explicitly designed to change the way CGI pipelines work by dramatically reducing the time between the artist's action and seeing the result. The mantra of the company became minimum time to first pixel. In other words, every time an artist weakens something, move a prop, adjust a light, change a shader, or something like that, the software should begin updating the final render image almost immediately. This led to Clarice's hallmark image-centric workflow. You see, unlike the legacy tools, where artists often work in low-quality preview windows and only see the output after a long render, Clarice lets artists work directly on their final images with full-quality effects on, all the time, which is just incredible. The interface and pipeline were built so that the render engine is always live in the scene, given near instant feedback. At its core, Clarice has a renderer that is primed and ready to start final renderings within milliseconds of your finger touching something. This makes it feel remarkably fast, insanely faster than it should. It feels like cheating. The least you can think about this is that this real-time responsiveness was a game-changer, so no more lengthy fire up the render engine steps or offline test renders to see lighting changes. As one double negative supervisor described Clarice, it puts the image at the core of the workflow and allows our artists to constantly view and interact with their rendered image. This means that artists can focus on creative decisions, and they are much less likely to make mistakes. In short, Clarice was built to keep artists focused on artistry, not wrestling with technical delays. You see, Clarice's development was guided by the founders' first-hand knowledge of what annoyed artists in practice. As the developers themselves put it, they sought to simplify user workflow, with disruptive software that answers CG artists' growing frustration. 
every design choice, from the data handle into the GUI, was made to maximize performance, interactivity, and efficiency in the professional setting. And as you can imagine, the result is a tool that feels fundamentally different from any legacy 3D software out there. So instead of artists adapting to the software's limitations, Clarice was tailored to the artist's needs. One of the core differences in Clarice IFX is how it manages scene data, especially for huge environments. Traditional 3D packages like Maya tend to store a lot of heavy data into a scene file, like geometry, textures, etc., which is a big reason why a massive Maya scene can take ages to open and consume enormous memory. But Clarice takes a smart approach. Its projects don't store geometry and texture data, instead objects and images are referenced externally by file path. In essence, the scene file in Clarice is more like a lightweight blueprint that points to geometry on disk rather than embedded it. This means you can have scenes with billions of polygons without blowing up the file or loading times. The heavy data is streamed in on the fly, only as needed, and the payoff is insane speeds when working with dense environments. Many artists immediately noticed that Clarice could open and handle scenes of mind-boggling complexity with ease, where legacy software would crawl or crash. To put it in perspective, early demos of Clarice showed it showing through scenes that would be virtually impossible in Maya. For example, some reported a 30 billion polygon procedural forest rendered in Clarice using its powerful instancing system. The team scattered leaves and branches over thousands of trees, achieving an absurd level of detail. In another test, they imported just a few high poly models from Maya and within seemingly seconds, built out a 2.7 billion polygon scene. And they did this inside Clarice, which shows how powerful it can get. These numbers are not inflated. Clarice's architecture truly allows for gigantic scene sizes that would bring other software to its knees. One reason is Clarice's famous instancing and scattering engine, which lets artists duplicate and vary millions of objects effectively. For example, populating a city or a forest without consuming proportional memory. The software only stores unique objects once, then reuses them, and it evaluates the changes in a smart, multi-threaded way. In fact, Clarice's evaluation engine automatically detects redundant computations and eliminates them to save memory and time. As an isotropic developer, noted how many painful hours of manual scene optimization this would have saved him in the past. And he said, it is amazing how many painful hours I could have saved if only we were working with Clarice at the time. Another difference is that Clarice forgoes certain features that often bloat other traditional 3D tools. For example, Clarice is not a modeler or a full animation package. It doesn't have tools to sculpt geometry or read characters. Instead, it focuses on the scene assembly, look development, lighting, and rendering stages. By narrowing its scope, Clarice is free to excel at handling data from other packages. The intended workflow is to import assets from software such as Maya, Max, Houdini, and other 3D software, then do all the heavy environment building, lighting, and rendering in Clarice. This focus allowed Isotropic to optimize Clarice's scene graph and rendering engine specifically. In a conventional pipeline, you might spend 45 minutes loading a huge scene in Maya, for example. But for Clarice, the same production shot would open almost straight away and then start rendering almost immediately. By cutting off the slow handout between 3D software and render engines, Clarice actually collapses what used to be separate steps into one fluid process. So the thing is, it effectively merges a 3D software, a render engine, and a compositor into one. An artist can composite render layers, apply matte painting projections, and even do basic 2D color corrections inside Clarice's layer system, all without exporting to another program. Clarice was absolutely great, but unfortunately, it was discontinued a couple of years ago, even though it was amazing and it was helping the industry tremendously. If you want to know why this is the case and how it was discontinued, please let me know in the comment section below to make part 2 of this video on the fall of Clarice. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.